Oh, Whiteout, you had such potential. Where did you go wrong? Well, I'm not sure where Whiteout went wrong, but I can tell you something about it. It is not a very good movie. Um, I'm a fan of the original graphic novel it's based on. The writer, Greg Rucka, is one of my favorite comic book writers, and uh, I really enjoyed his, his original graphic novel. And somewhere in the translation, it just doesn't turn into a very good film. And it's interesting because there's a special feature on the Blu-ray that you can watch all about how it translated from page to film, and they show some comparisons between the comic book and the movie, and they are pretty striking in how close they stuck to many of the comic book panels. I'm not sure what didn't translate well, but something didn't. Uh, aside from a shower scene with Kate Beckinsale and a really good action sequence about 30 minutes into the film that could have also come straight from a, a horror film uh, and actually should serve as the basis for kind of a slasher film in the Antarctic, uh, the film really doesn't have much to offer. Uh, even with a pr really good cast, Kate Beckinsale is solid in the movie. Gabriel Macht, who's an actor that I really like, he was in The Spirit and American Outlaws. Um, Columbus Short is pretty good. Tom Skerritt is always great. Even uh, Alex O'Loughlin from uh, television's Moonlight is is pretty good in his role, but um, none of these people can really work to bring this film together. It's just kind of a mess. You really don't know what's happening most of the time. You're not really sure what the characters' motivations are most of the time. And um, the action sequences, again, are pretty good, but the special effects are weak. Uh, in a movie that's filmed in the Antarctic, when you have to digitize snow you've kind of got a problem. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where the characters, some of the characters get sort of trapped under some snow and they open a door and all this snow comes filtering in like a flood. Um, and it's all computer-generated snow. It's fake. And it looks terrible. It looks fake. And I don't understand why... You you couldn't use real snow in a scene like that. You know, this is an example of why CGI is being way overused. And what happens is when they have to digitize snow in a scene like that, it takes away from their budget to dig digitize the big things like a plane crash that happens in the movie. And guess what? The plane crash looks like it's something straight out of a PlayStation 1 video game. It's not particularly convincing. So, Whiteout, uh, it just isn't necessarily worth your time unless you're a really diehard Kate Beckinsale fan. The Blu-ray does offer up some nice bang for your buck, at least, though. Picture quality is good in terms of clarity. Uh, colors are almost non-existent. This is a movie that's kind of not black and white, but it, it, it's so it's blacks, whites, browns, and grays mostly. It's a very non-color-filled film, um, and so the transfer represents that well. You can still see everything that's going on. You can make out all the action, um, but I think the transfer's only flaw is a flaw in the movie itself. It really lets you see just how bad the special effects are in almost every scene because the picture quality is so good overall. Uh, the surround sound is excellent. You can't complain about that. You do get a Dolby True HD 5.1 surround track. It works very well. The sounds of the Arctic wind blowing around you are ever-present. Uh, the action scenes really do sound great. There's a nice fidelity to the whole thing. So in terms of audio, you really aren't getting short-shifted here at all. Uh, and in terms of extra features, uh, the Blu-ray includes a couple that are exclusive, and they are the ones to watch. Um, the Coldest Thriller Ever is a basic making of, but it does kind of discuss the troubles with shooting in negative 65 degrees in the Antarctic. Uh, and then White Out from Page to Screen is the feature I mentioned earlier. And it's really the cool one, which lets you see how they transform this comic book into a movie. And they do some really nice direct screen-to-page comparisons. And even though it's only 12 minutes long, it was easily the best thing on the disc. Um, in addition, there's some additional scenes, which are um, deleted scenes, obviously. They are not exclusive to the Blu-ray. They're available on both the Blu-ray and the DVD. And finally, you get a digital copy to transfer to your computer or portable MP3 player, whatever you want to watch it on that's not a big, nice television. So, Whiteout is not the worst movie ever, but it's certainly far from an effective thriller, and uh, I really can't recommend it to you.